भगवती वास ओम नमो भगवती वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवती वासुदेवाय uh so hari krishna dear devotees thank you very much for joining today uh I'd like to seek um, the blessings of uh, radha krishna gonitai and krishna varnam shepa padru maraj so we continue with um, the overview of bhagavatam 10th canto and today we'll try to do chapter 80 i wanted to seek uh, the blessings of the vishnu present today as well yes riyansh you got your hand up Can I recite the shloka? Oh yeah, please, please, please. <laughs> I need help with this one. Go for it. Kimane tam punyam avadute na bhikshuna shiyahine na lokesmin garhite na damane damina cha yo sautri loka gurona. श्रीनिवास पर्यांकस्ता श्रीय हिवा परीश्वक्तोग्रजोयटा His Brilliant. translation: The residents of the palace said, "What pious activity acts has this unkept, impoverished, impoverished?" Brahmana performed. People regard him as lowly and contemptible. Yet the spiritual master of the three worlds, the abode of God Shri, is serving him reverently. Leaving the goddess of fortune sitting on her bed, the Lord has embraced this Brahmana as if he were. and all the brother wonderful hari krishna well done for reciting this so well i was struggling like anything um and this is actually a really phenomenal chapter very endearing <laughs> um and these verses are really amazing as well uh, we'll see the context of who this brahman is that uh, the lord is worshiping in a minute and embracing so okay this chapter is named the brahman sudama visits lord krishna in dwarka and it relates how lord krishna worshiped his brahman friend sudama who came to his palace seeking charity how the two of them discussed the past times they had shared while living at the home of their spiritual master sandipani muni so it begins with um, uh parikshit maharaj uh, asking i want to hear more you've told us so many things about krishna and balaram but i want to hear more i wish to hear about other valorous deeds performed by the supreme personality of god at mukunda why because actual speech is that which describes the qualities of the lord we we like to talk right? we really like to talk a lot uh, at least a lot of people most people but most of the talking is not related to the lord and therefore has very little value if any value and all we're doing is uh, inviting death because it's just like the frog who croaks and the snake of time comes and swallows him up so if we're not careful if our um speech is not related with the supreme then we're pretty much wasting our life we're wasting our time real hands of those that work for him a true mind is that which always remembers him and actual ears are those that listen to sanctifying topics about him so this is a really fantastic uh, king parikshit has really analyzed it so an actual head is one that bows down to the lord real eyes are those that see only the lord and actual limbs are those which honor the water that is bathed the lotus feet the lord's lotus feet or his devotees so this is fantastic analysis uh, of um, how we can use our body mind and uh, everything in the service of the supreme lord and make it successful prabhuji yes while i was reading this chapter i thought wow do we do all this to and to what an extent we do it 
just, Indeed. just threw me back. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's absolutely. And that's what Bhagavatam it does. It gives you a good shake up, you know, <laughs> yeah. what you're actually doing. Yeah. No, it's very true. Very, very true. I, I was similarly thinking, Reiki, you know, <laughs> Hard, hardly any, you know, hardly half a percent of the day is, uh, you know, is done, is, is in this uh, sort of mood. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a good, uh, it's a good thing. It's a good wake up call, you know, sort yourself out, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, very, very, very nice uh, how Parishit Maharaj has analyzed this so nicely for us. So then Sukadeva Goswami answers, fully in meditation of the Supreme Lord, he said, Lord Krishna had a certain personal Brahman friend named Sudama, who was most learned in Vedic knowledge and detached from all sense enjoyment. Furthermore, his mind was peaceful and his senses were subdued. He maintained himself and his wife with whatever came of its own accord. And thus they were poverty stricken. So he was really a phenomenal uh, Brahman. One day, Sudama's chaste wife, her face dried up because of her distress, unable to find any food to prepare for her husband, went to him and, tr and trembling with fear, she spoke as follows. So she was also very devoted to Sudama all these years, you know, without any wealth, not complaining at all. But then, you know, if there's no food in the, in the home, what is a woman meant to do? You know? <laughs> what is anybody meant to do? So this is Sudama, always peaceful, chanting. He had a very nice cottage, <laughs> um, very simple, Det detached uh, bungalow. <laughs> so his wife, she said to him, Oh Brahman, isn't it true that the husband of the goddess of fortune is the personal friend of your exalted self? That greatest of Yadavs, the Supreme Lord Krishna, is compassionate to Brahmins and very willing to grant them his shelter. O fortunate one, please approach him, the real shelter of all saints. You will certainly give abundant wealth to such a suffering householder as you. So her motives were, of course, she wanted to, you know, have a little bit better material life, a bit more, you know, a little bit more wealth. But it wasn't that she was intoxicated by wealth or wanted, was pushing him, go to work and, you know, um, get a job, earn some money. She was satisfied as well. But she also felt like, we've got so little, not even any food to eat. I can't even cook something for you. Um, so why don't you approach your friend? Lord Krishna is now the ruler of the Bojas, the Vishnis, and the Andakas. And he's staying at Dwaka, which wasn't far from where they were. Since he gives even his own self to anyone who simply remembers his lotus feet, what doubt is there that he, the spiritual master of the universe, will bestow upon his sincere worshipper? prosperity and material enjoyment, which are, not e which are not even very desirable. So she, she understands. She understands that actually uh, material prosperity uh, uh, and enjoyment is not, not significant. So I, I think we shouldn't misunderstand her position. Um, and I love this bit here. Since he gives even his own self to anyone who simply remembers his lotus feet. This is the Supreme Lord. He'll give himself. All we have to do is turn our faces towards him, our attention towards him. When his wife thus repeatedly implored him in various ways, the Brahman thought to himself as follows. So this is uh, Sudama's wife pleading to him and see his residence, it's so simple. So he thought to himself, to see Krishna is indeed the greatest achievement in life. Because he spent time with Krishna in Sudama's and uh, Sandipani Muni's ashram. So he knew what Krishna is like. He loved him then, he loved him now. 
loves him now. Thus he decided to go. So he didn't decide to go because, yes, my dear wife, you're right. Let's get some money. <laughs> His motive was completely different. Yeah, it'd be great to see him again. So Dharma's wife begged four handfuls of flat rice, poa, from neighboring uh, Brahmins. She tied them up into, tied up the rice into a torn piece of cloth and gave it to her husband. That was the present for Lord Krishna. I have to take something, right? You're going to see the Lord. You go to the temple, you take something with you, and you um, offer that to the Lord. Taking the flat rice, the saintly Brahman set off for Dwarka, all the while wondering, how will I be able to have Krishna's audience? He, after all, he is a king. He is the greatest. He's a supreme personality of God. Why would he want to see me, an old Brahman coming in torn clothes and Extremely humble position he was taking. As Sudama approached the palace of Lord Krishna's principal wife, Rukmini Devi, Lord Achuta was seated on his consort's bed. At that time, sporting, spotting the Brahman at some distance, Krishna immediately rose from his seat, went forward to meet him, and with great pleasure embraced him. The Lord felt intense ecstasy upon touching the body of his dear friend, the wise Brahman, and thus he shed tears of love. This is just absolutely incredible, incredible. So, and as we read in the verse, everybody was thinking, who is this old man? <laughs> Not that very clean very poor, torn clothes, and Krishna's running towards him, embracing him. Who is he? <laughs> this is such an amazing greeting by the Supreme Lord of his devotee. But even more amazing, Krishna then seated his friend Sudama upon the bed, then the Lord, who purifies the whole world, personally offered him various tokens of respect. Did Arti, performed Arti, and he washed his feet, O king. After which he sprinkled the water of the, from the washing, bathing of Sudama's feet on his own head. My goodness. This is just incredible. A little bit like how he was worshipping Narad Muni when he came to Dwarka. But this is, Narad Muni is Narad Muni. This is Sudama. Nobody knows him. Nobody cares for him. <laughs> he anointed he, himself with divinely, he, so he anointed Sudama with divinely fragrant sandalwood, agrur and kurikum pastes and happily worshipped him with aromatic incense and arrays of lamps. Krishna offered him betel nut and a cow. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rukmini fanned the shabbily dressed Brahman with a yaktail whisk. All of this astounded the residents of the palace. So this is incredible. Is everybody's worshipping the Supreme Lord and he's worshipping this old, poor Brahman. <laughs> and the residents of the palace are wondering, what is going on here? And there's Rukmini Devi with the yaktail, whisk, fan, worshipping Sudama. The residents of the palace said, what pious acts has this unkept, impoverished Brahman performed? People regarding him as lowly and contemptible. Yet the spiritual master of the three worlds, the abode of goddess Shri, is serving him reverently, leaving the goddess of fortune sitting on her bed. So Rukmini, and they were sitting on the bed, and he left her to greet the Brahman Sudama. <laughs> The Lord embraced this Brahman as if he were an elder, older brother. So this is really 
extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. I think even the guards, they were reluctant from, I think I read somewhere, I can't remember where now, they were reluctant to let him in because he looked so terrible. But when Krishna saw him and ran towards him, they let him in. Taking each other's hands, Krishna and Sudama talked pleasantly about how they once lived together in the school of their guru, Sandipani Muni. The Supreme Lord said, so this is a um, very nice uh, conversation going on now. Though you are in household life, your mind is unaffected by material desires. When a twice-born student has learned from his guru all that is to be learned, he can enjoy spiritual life, which lies beyond all ignorance. So, very, very sweet uh, statements by the Supreme Lord. Because when one takes shelter of the Guru, then one is protected, one is uh, safe, you know, in this, even in this world. The Guru takes responsibility. He who gives a person his physical birth is his first spiritual master. So usually we, we say Matri Devo Bhava, the uh, spiritual master. The mother is the first guru. And he who initiates him as a twice-born Brahman and engages him in religious duties is indeed more directly his spiritual master, his actual guru, one who initiates him. But the person who bestows transcendental knowledge upon all the spiritual orders of society is one's ultimate spiritual master. Indeed, he's as good as my own self. So this will be in the category of Prabhupada, somebody who um, preaches widely and um, gives the uh, mass of people the opportunity to become close to God. He's con Krishna considered that person as good as his, his own self. So Narad Muni, for example, would be in that category. I am not as satisfied by ritual worship Brahmanic initiation, penances or self-discipline as I am by faithful service rendered to one's spiritual master. So this is uh, Krishna's putting the worship of the spiritual master above all other worship. Why? Because the spiritual master is representing Krishna, it's non-different from Krishna. And there's a very nice... Uh, by Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, where he says that Shakshadari Dvena Samastha Shakshadari Dvena Samastha Shastriya Yukta Tata Bhaveta Eva Sadhvi. So the spiritual master uh, and the supreme personality of God are one. Yeah, um, not that the spiritual master is God, but because He's representing the Supreme Personality. He's one with the Supreme. And then Krishna continues, do you remember what happened to us while we were living with our spiritual master? Once our guru's wife sent us to fetch firewood so that, uh, and after we entered the vast forest, an unseasonal snow storm arose with fierce wind and rain and harsh thunder. Then the sun set and we lost our way. We simply held one another's hand and in great distress wandered aimlessly in the forest. Our guru, Sandipani Muni, understanding our predicament, set out after sunrise to search for us and found us in distress. Gurudev was so satisfied um, that we were so dedicated to him that we completely disregarded our own comfort. Gurudev said, this indeed is the duty of all true disciples, to repay the debt to their spiritual master by offering him with pure heart their wealth and even their very lives. Gurudev blessed us that may all of our desires be fulfilled. May the Vedic mantras we have learned never lose their meaning for us in this world or the next. Simply by the grace of the spiritual master, a person can fulfill life's purpose and attain eternal peace. 
So this is the blessing. And Sudama remembered that. And that's why he stayed such a, uh, a faithful devotee, Brahman disciple. He never forgot the, what he learned in the Guru. It's easy to forget because once we come out of the Guru and go into the materialistic world through bad association or through association, it's easy to lose what you've learned at the, at the, at the spiritual master's home. So this is a really nice painting, Sudama and Krishna. Sudama said, what could I possibly have failed to achieve since I was able to personally live with you whose every desire is fulfilled? at the home of our spiritual master. O oh Lord, your body comprises the absolute truth in the form of the Vedas and is thus a source of all auspicious goals of life. That you took up residence at the school of a spiritual master is simply one of your pastimes in which you play the role of a human being. So Sudama's understanding is spot on. Um, and he was so fortunate, he, he had, the company of his guru, but he had also the company of his of, of the supreme lord. So, and he understood that. Yeah, he understood that. So, this is a incredible, in very very endearing chapter. It just shows you the sweetness of the Lord. You just fall in love with the Lord by these two chapters. This number eighty and eighty one, really extraordinary chapters. Any any questions? Any comments? Now, one thought I've just realized, Prabhuji, that Krishna being the Supreme Lord, he knew about, he must have known all about Sudama, but yeah. he never approached him unless, yeah. until that, or never helped him until the time when Sudama went to him asking for help. Yeah. So, does it mean that if we are in trouble, we have to, we can ask for help from Krishna in one way or the other way? For sure. For sure. I mean, in the Bhagavatam, there's that verse, a karma, karma. Um, if you have any desires, if you have no desires, if you have uh, lots of material desires, just approach Krishna. <laughs> Don't go to anybody else. So, yes, if you have, but the ideal situation is that, like, like Sudama actually, he, he knew Krishna is just there, you know, and I could go to him anytime. And, but until his wife told him, made him really go to Krishna, he didn't go. But not just that, even when, even when he went before Krishna, he didn't ask. He didn't ask for anything. He was so happy, so blissful, just remembering Krishna. Um, he didn't ask for anything from Krishna. And that's actually the position of the devotee. Uh, the, the pure devotee doesn't ask for anything. If we're going to ask for something, the thing which uh, is constantly throughout the Bhagavatam, the prayers by the devotee, please, please, let me not forget you in any circumstance. Let me not forget you. Because, you know, this material world, there's so many, there's so many uh, obstacles, and uh, Maya is very strong, so it can take our mind away at any moment. So ideally, we should not pray for any material things because they will come to us in any case. Why ask for something that's going to come anyway? One way or another, they will come. But spiritual things. They won't come unless you ask, unless you endeavor, unless you beg. They won't come so easily. Does that make sense, Nanyuan? Yes, yeah. 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 The thing is, we are in this material world and surrounded by, and we are sort of, what I would say, trying to become a greater a devotee, try to be as perfect as we can, but we are not, not yeah. at least in this life. So we have our desires. And uh, as you 
and we, we can ask him rather than going to the other different demos yes. and try yes, to yes, yes, yes. get their mercy. Yes, the, for sure, for sure. No, absolutely. Ideally, first. we should not. I understand. Ideally, we should not. But as you say, we are in this <laughs> material yeah. world and we have to take birth yeah. again and again and again. Yeah, no, that's very true. Uh, I agree with what you, your, your comment there. Um, if we're going to ask, ask from Krishna. Mm. Don't, uh, don't ask for, from uh, others. Yes. Because he'll give in such a way that it will help us uh, go closer to him. So yes. this, is, um, this is important to understand. Yes. Thank you, Prabhupada. Very good. Good, uh, good point, uh, Anivin. Um, now, I wanted uh, you to read this because what's happened is uh, um, uh, Kamakshi's elder brother, Dirubai Majevdia, passed away yesterday night, uh, was in hospital. He was 86. So the eldest brother okay. uh, has passed away. So I think in Birmingham or Leicester, she said, so they won't join us, of course, but uh, we also will pray and dedicate this satsang to to the elder eldest brother Dhirubhai. Okay. So yes, you I... you're welcome to read the instruction yeah. right? okay. and any comments you like you can make. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, instructions can to ten chapter eight. In this chapter, we learn more of what really appeals to Krishna when Sudama visits him in Dwarka. Upon reminiscing that time in Sandipani Muni's ashram. As his disciples, Krishna converses with Sudama and says, Certainly, O Brahmana, of all the followers of the Vardhashram system, those who take advantage of the words I speak in my form as a spiritual master and thus easily cross over the ocean of material existence, best understand their own true welfare. I, the soul of all the beings, am not as satisfied by ritual worship Brahminical initiation, penances, or self discipline, as I am by faithful service rendered to one's spiritual master. The purport explains ultimately, the bona fide spiritual master, learned in the transcendental science and thus able to take one across the ocean of birth and death to the spiritual world, such a guru is most deserving of worship and respect, for he is the direct representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as stated here. Yeah, that's, that, is, that is true. But sometimes we have seen about, just my comment on the spiritual master is that, yes, it, we have to find somebody who is 100% true and not at all partial and not sort of biased up to the, from one to the other. Yeah, I'm a little bit, little bit becomes skeptical about the spiritual master, but I do agree that he is in the line of descendant of the Supreme Lord. It's Prabhuji. We can't hear you, Prabhuji. Yes, no, you're right, Naniman. Um the qualification that the guru has to have is he cannot never fall down. He's completely fixed in the seva of the Lord. Mm. And he's completely um, dedicated to the Supreme Lord and dedicated to his disciple to commit to take him back to the, to the, um, to the spiritual world. And we were, I would say we were really lucky because our Guru Mahaj was always very you know, determined that you will uh, you will make uh, spiritual progress, and he almost sometimes, you know, he would, he would um, sort of be. Just one second, sorry. Somebody just uh, wants something in in Bharat. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> answer them before they go to sleep. Um, now, the spiritual master, sorry, do, do you remember where I was at? Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. yeah, they're usually dedicated and they have support you to the- Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
Uh, Guru Maharaj was very. No, Guru he, he would. He would. Um, maybe this is not the right word, but he would. He would um, force us to improve. <laughs> um, he would sit us down. He would, uh, and our, I remember, especially in the early days, hour after hour after hour, he would take us to the scriptures. And may, maybe two of us, maybe 10 of us, 20 of us, it didn't matter to him. He just wanted us to improve. And sometimes he would even say, right, um, I want you to do this. I want you to um, support uh, this cause and give this Lakshmi. <coughs> and sometimes you'd feel, wait a second, this is a bit heavy, but now I'm going through the Bhagavatam and I'm going through especially the 11th canto now. Um, and in there, it says that the, one of the gurus uh, um, uh, will come across this when we go through the 11th canto. Mm -hmm. He's uh, uh, one of the gurus says, yes, the Brahmin, the, the uh, sorry, the sannyasi or the brahmachari, they have the right to take the uh, wealth of the householder to purify that householder. <laughs> so it's quite interesting how the spiritual master, he will not care for how people think of him. How do my disciples, do my disciples uh, love me? No, he's not interested in that. He's more interested in the welfare of the disciple, right? I will do uh, what it takes to make you a devotee. And sometimes it would be, you know, like uh, we could say heavy handed, but it's not heavy handed. It's his, it's his prerogative. It's his duty. Uh, and he would often tell us off. And he said, look, if I didn't tell you off, it means I don't care for you. You're nothing. But I'm telling you off because I care for you. I want you to improve. I want you to go back to Godhead. So, you know, in that way, um, it was good for him to explain that to us. Uh, he didn't need to explain it, but he, it was good he explained it. Did you meet him a lot of time, Prabhuji? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> I spent quite a long time with him. Uh, in, like, was it in India? Here. He used to live with us uh, for like uh, three, four, five weeks a, a year. And then okay. when we go to Bharat, uh, and especially his ashram, we would spend some time with him. Um, of course, you can never spend enough time with the spiritual master. But when you're with him, it's heavy. You know, it's it's like wow, <laughs> you're on the you're on your toes because uh, he's he's wanting to train you. Yeah, um, that I understand. I yeah, understand. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's heavy, but it was good as well. It was very. Uh, I mean, it was intense. No doubt, serving him was always very, very intense. Um, but it was always very fulfilling as well because you knew he cared for you. you know? Yes. He wanted it is to... like your parents, isn't it? Like in olden yeah. days, they used to scold us, and sometimes yeah. even when beat the uh, not beat the girls, but the brother to make him see sense. That I can understand. Correct. Yeah, it's similar mood. It's a similar mood. Similar That's mood, right. Yes. Yeah, it's a similar mood. And yeah. Okay. okay. No, thank you. But you're right. You know, that's to get these to days. The, I think things may have changed. I feel that way. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. the old style is not there so much. Oh, no, mm. no. Yeah. But at some point, at some point, we just have to see the spiritual. It's sometimes it's a leap of faith as well. I mean, you know, people have been burnt badly in the past by taking a guru who then doesn't fulfill his obligations, you know. Um, so it is a bit of a leap of faith sometimes. I took a leap of faith in, in Guru Maharaj for sure. Uh, Trikalagya, he's the one who actually uh, brought him first to our house. Um, okay. I have to go. Somebody's my calling me. Okay, okay. Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Nani. Yeah. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Anybody else? Any other comments? Any other? Yes. Yeah. Anything else? Anybody like to share? Okay. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai.